Everybody, I'm trying something a little bit new today over here on Facebook. Let me see if I can't steady up my camera here. We're over here and you see my other microphone here. We're going to try a little bit of a tech tip expansion. Tech tip expansion meaning we had something on the podcast. If you guys didn't know, the podcast was released yesterday. We talked about hourly wages, <clears throat> but we also had tech tips embedded in the podcast. So I want to kind of expand on that a little bit and kind of do a little bit of drawing here. See if this is something we can't do on a semi-regular basis. Trying to always find ways to interact with everybody and some guys that don't like YouTube that like Facebook and therefore and they're on. So, oh, we got some text coming in already. Radio? No, it's not the radio. It's the Facebook. You're on the Facebook, guys. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the other screen. I just see I have this lovely sheet of paper, okay? So we see what we can do here. And I'm going to kind of go into what I'm talking about. And we'll explain it that way, and then we'll see if this helps. All right, I got another microphone over here. See if we can't focus up a little bit. The tech tip today was about metering devices and having the wrong metering device. So you're going to see my expert drawing of an HVAC system, and I'm very sorry about that. I'll go ahead and write that. Expert drawing. See how I just left out like half the letters right there? It's great. All right. Maybe I have to back up the camera just a little bit. It's a little bit of an experiment here, guys. So we have our lovely condenser. That's what that is. That's Goodman, you can tell. It's a Goodman condenser. I'm definitely going to have to fix the camera because it keeps wanting to unfocus and focus again. Let me see if I can back it up a little bit. <laughs> see if that helps. All right, we have the condenser, and you have two lines coming out of the condenser and air conditioning. Smaller lines, a liquid line. The larger lines, a suction line. Go into the evaporator coil. We have a nice A coil right there. That's very nice. We have a liquid line going into a metering device right here. Then out of the back of the coil, we have the suction line going back. This is about as plain as it gets right here. I love this. My wife texts me while we're doing this. We need to go to the pumpkin patch. Well, not today, wife. Not today. So what I was talking about is back in the day, when you got your matchups, and still today, especially on the piston system, because this will be a piston right here. We're not talking about TXVs. Piston, orifice, flow rater. They're all the same thing. Piston, orifice, and flow rater are all the same thing. And what we're talking about is when you have a mismatch system, not an unintentional mismatch, but an intentional mismatch in the means that they are different capacities. So let's say we have a two-ton outdoor unit. And then to get a higher efficiency, they'll actually put it with a three-ton unit for the evaporator coil. So you have a three-ton evaporator coil and a two-ton outdoor unit. And it doesn't have to be exact like that. It can be a two-and-a-half ton. Heck, it can be even larger than three tons, depending on what the manufacturer has tested and approved. Now, I say mismatch, and I don't mean mismatch like it's not supposed to be that way. I just mean they're not the same tonnage. And they'll do that. And what happens when you do that? is the suction or back pressure will go up. The compression ratio here at the compressor will go down and it'll be a more efficient unit. But there's a big problem that I've noticed throughout the years on systems like this, is that when you get these parts shipped to you, let's say this three ton evaporator is part of an air handler. When you get it shipped to you, you'll actually have a big issue because you'll have that piston in there that's maybe for a three ton outdoor unit. Let's say you get a piston that's I'm going to guess maybe you have a 74 or whatever it is, 74 piston. And the outdoor unit will be shipped with a piston, but a lot of guys will ignore that. And they'll leave the piston in this particular coil, and it's going to cause problems. Let's say it should have been like a 69 or 68 or something like that, and instead it has a 74. So what's going to happen right off the bat? See, this piston right here has to be a certain size. And if it's not a certain size, you're going to have unequal refrigerant pressures. They're not going to be exactly where they should be. 
What the world? Very sad. My wife's called me an ass because I'm not answering my text. Well, you, those of you guys out there, make sure you love your wife and always answer her text. I hope she's listening. So if your piston is oversized, what's going to happen is it's going to allow more liquid through into the evaporator coil. That's going to have a tendency to flood the coil, lower the superheat, and in turn, you're not going to have as much refrigerant stacked over here in this section of the liquid line, so your subcooling is going to go down. So if your piston's too big, what's going to happen here? All right, let's write it down. The subcooling is going to go down from where it's supposed to be. Is that a good area right there? There we go. The superheat is going to go down because more refrigerant is going to go into the coil. It's going to flood the coil, and a coil that's flooded has no superheat. The liquid pressure is going to go down as well because more refrigerant is passing through that metering device, meaning there's less refrigerant on this side, therefore the pressure is going to go down. The suction pressure is going to go up because more refrigerant is going into the evaporator coil. So what you're going to have, and let's look at the symptoms again here. So let's say you go out to a machine and you're looking for a pressure of 220, this is R22, over 75. That's what the target pressures are. You want a subcooling of 10. You want a superheat of 15. Some pretty standard numbers right there. So what are you going to do here when you go out to this machine? This is what you're expecting to see. This is what you should see on a day like the day you're going out there. I'm not going to get into the particulars. Maybe we'll do that at a different time, how to get targets. We've already done it in the past. It's on YouTube. If you guys want to see it, we'll probably do it again though. But say you go out there and all of a sudden you have 200 over 82 with a subcooling of 1 and a superheat of 3. Normally, if you have a very low superheat, you'll say, oh, it's overcharged. That's a symptom of being overcharged. Too much refrigerant in the evaporator coil. But you come back and you see your subcooling is 10. It's down to 1. It's supposed to be 10. It's down to 1. You say, well, I need to add charge because the subcooling is not high enough. So what's the deal? It has symptoms of an undercharge and an overcharge. And then you look at the pressures up here, and it's the same thing. Your liquid pressure is too low. It should be higher, so you're thinking maybe I need to add charge. And then you look at your back pressure or suction pressure, and it's too high. It would indicate you have to take away charge. But think about this. It's not always about the charge. Sometimes it's about the type of metering device. And this can happen with TXVs as well. But this was really common with pistons because pistons have the tendency to be wrong because they're not changed out and adapted the way they're supposed to. A lot of machines have pistons in them from the factory that you have to change depending on how you match it up. So you always want to take a look at the installation instructions. I know I've done it for years with Goodman especially. There's still a few piston machines out there. I think Ameristar takes pistons. Goodman still has pistons. Nordine's bad about this where depending on what the matchup is, you might have to change up or down just a little bit. If you get close, typically it's hard to tell the difference. But if you have like a tonnage difference between these piston sizes, you're definitely going to see the difference. So let's say you, you're out there with a 74 piston. And as soon as you change it to the correct piston, you're going to see your numbers change. You change it to, let's say, let's say you needed a 68. You need a 68 piston. So you change it to the 68. And what's going to happen is it's going to back up refrigerant in this section of the pipe. This pressure is going to go back up. It's going to cause this to starve a little bit more than it was over in the evaporator coil. So it's going to go down. It's going to back that refrigerant up like we just said. It's going to stack, and your subcooling is going to go up, and it's going to starve like we said here. Therefore, our superheat's going to go up. So that'll solve your problem. Now, that's a pretty quick check. You can pump down the system and check that. And like we've said before, we've talked about this a few times. If you're checking a piston, and you're going to check it, and you're going to be in and out in about 10, 15 seconds checking that piston, you don't really have to pull a vacuum either. So it's a really fast process. And the reason why you don't have to pull a vacuum is because it outgasses pretty much for the... 20 minutes, 30 minutes afterwards. You can actually see it coming out of the pipe. You'll see those little ripples like you see on a hot day coming off your dash. You'll see that coming out of the pipe. So, all right, guys, that's it for this one. I just want to do this real quick, see how this is going to work out here on Facebook. If you like it, make a comment. I can't see the comments right now, unfortunately, because I haven't pulled them up, but hopefully I can get a plug in for this program where I'll, I'll be able to see the comments. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, just go on about your business. Don't say nothing. And I will see you guys on the next one.